Hey guys, welcome out. Corey here yet again. We're, we're doing design stuff. Today we're gonna be covering five mistakes that I run into when it comes to designs and screen printing and we're gonna be covering how to avoid them and how to fix them. Hey guys, I missed you. Uh, I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. I haven't been out over here talking with you, but today uh, I got some, some uh, tips and tricks and uh, some know-how and some do's and don'ts. With or without the scooter stick. It's all in the realm of screen printing design. I, uh, over here at Golden Press Studio, am the lead art director. <laughs> That's what they call me. <laughs> I manage uh, everything that, all the artwork, all that kind of stuff that comes into the studio. I'm the one that preps it and gets it ready to be printed on shirts and all of that stuff. Over the years, I've uh, noticed a handful of reoccurring issues that just show up all the time. I want to cover some of those with you guys, how to fix them, how to avoid them. Maybe you're not a designer and you're trying to get shirts printed for the very first time. And so maybe these are some things to keep in mind when you're sending artwork to any other screen printer, that these are gonna be helpful things that they're gonna appreciate if you maybe do some of these steps. So the first thing uh, you just need to know when it comes to screen printing design is you're gonna want to be working in Adobe Illustrator or another vector-based program. A vector is sort of a mathematical equation that doesn't matter how large you uh, kind of stretch your design or how small you shrink your design down, it's always gonna have perfect resolution. And when it comes to screen printing, we want our artwork as crisp and as clean as possible. So without any uh, further and a doing, let's just, uh, Jump into tip number one, expand your fonts. So uh, let me show you a little example of what it looks like when uh, someone doesn't expand their fonts and what, what prompt you end up getting. So this is a file that someone has sent over in the past. And if I open it with Adobe Illustrator, I get this right here. This is missing fonts. And uh, sometimes Illustrator can do a little search and can find some fonts for you and that you might be able to get lucky on that. But uh, let's just hit close and skip and just close this file. Let me show you how to go about expanding fonts if, uh, if you're the one making this artwork. You know, getting that prompt, pretty much the next step for you is just to contact uh, whoever created this file and ask them to expand it or send you the font and then you can just install it and that will fix the problem. But I'll show you real quick on how to go about uh, expanding fonts just in general. And so we have this font right here and uh, it has this little underline on it. There's no outline around each of these because it is a font. And we want to turn it into a shape instead of just being a font. We want it a shape so everyone can use this and work with it on any computer. We have our font selected. We're gonna go up to object. We're gonna go down to expand, click. It's gonna say fill, have object and fill checked. You're just gonna hit okay. And boom, now, we have all these little anchor points and this is now a shape instead of just a font. And uh, it's a vectored object, we can you know, zoom in as close as we want and it's always gonna stay super crisp. We can make it big or small. And this is what we're looking for when we're working with a design, getting ready to screen print, just a nice expanded font. And again, the reason why we're doing this is when it's a font, if some other person that's opening this file doesn't have that font, preloaded into their computer, then they can't open it. That's why you got that prompt before. But if you expand your font and make it a shape, then any person can open this file and it's just being read as a shape. It's not a font. They don't need anything preloaded into their computer. They're able to just grab this, go, and there won't be any issues. Tip number two is very similar to uh, the old expand our font, but we're talking about expanding our stroke. And say uh, someone, you know, they, they made this design and this is exactly the size of, of the circle they wanted. This is the width of the stroke they wanted on this here circle. Maybe they didn't make this design to scale of what they're actually gonna print it as. And so here I am in Illustrator and I'm gonna you know, prep this artwork. And so I'd highlight this circle and I'm like, okay, uh, I need this circle to be uh, maybe 10 inches wide. And so I'm just gonna you know, set it off to the edge. I need to pull it over this 10. And we see the width of this circle right now, but as I 
make it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Now it's it's not the same. It's kind of changed its its shape. And so if I Command Z and Command C and V copy a new one, and I'm gonna go and hit Object and expand. Say okay. When I expand this circle, it's gonna maintain its width contrary to this one. Here, let's give it a different color just to, to help show you what's going on. And when I, oh, it's kind of behind it at the moment, but when I put this one at 10 inches, and let's bring it forward, you can see that they're clearly different sizes. Uh, and that's what we don't want. We don't want uh, to switch up a, de a design or change it. Uh, we want to maintain exactly its shape. Now, I believe there is a setting within Illustrator that you can go and uh, set and change that I think uh, your strokes can maintain their shape and uh, size. I prefer to work with shapes pretty much every time I'm working in Illustrator. I like the final product to always just be solid shape um, just because strokes and those kind of things can get hairy at times. Maybe uh, you're dealing with a stroke that has some kind of unique width to it. Say you have a stroke that's kind of like this and uh, you can select this and if you go up to object you can't hit expand, it's grayed out, but if you hit expand appearance then that turns it into a shape again. And so now this is a shape versus a stroke like it was before. I'll just kind of show you a little compare and contrast yet again. We go object, expand appearance. So this one is a shape, this one is a stroke, but if we grab both of these and maybe we'll scale them down, you can see what happens that we don't want that happening. We don't want it to get all fat and weird. We want it to maintain its actual shape. All right, so the third kind of tip I have for you, this one's a little personal and for me, so if you disagree with it, whatever. I strongly feel that you should not use clipping masks in Adobe Illustrator. And that's pertaining to screen printing design. You know, I think in other realms of design, it's probably fine. I've used clipping masks in the past for non-screen printed designs, but if we're talking about screen printing, I think clipping masks often will cause problems and they're confusing. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Say someone sent you a design. They, they want this circle with this texture uh, printed on a shirt. And you're like, all right, cool. Uh, you know, we can do that. It's a, I, I can zoom in. It looks clearly a vectored object. I think we're running uh, in a good direction. You know, it's red right now and I wanna make this black. And as you can see, as I, my mouse is hovering over here, we have all these little uh, things that I'm, I'm hovering on. Uh, and that is because this is a clipping mask. And so you click on it and you're like, well, it looks like a circle. And you're kind of confused because you can't access any of these anchor points. This is what happens uh, when you release a clipping mask. And so maybe, maybe you have a clipping mask and you don't really know what to do with it. So you're gonna click, you're gonna do a right click, and uh, there's this button right here that says release clipping mask. And when you do that, things are gonna go nuts. You're gonna hit that and bam, now all of a sudden your design has fallen apart, you lost your circle, you don't know what's going on, and you just wanted to change the color to black. You know? So let's uh, Command Z a couple times. And like say if, if I didn't take that step, I go click on this and I go to change this to black. All of a sudden now we have a black circle and it's all messed up. Yeah, we're in a problem. This design is completely possible to make without using a clipping mask. Uh, and I'm gonna show you real quick on how to go about doing something like this, or either maybe you have to fix this artwork, or maybe uh, you just avoided using the clipping mask and did this method from the start. And that's gonna save everyone kind of a bit of a headache. So uh, let's go and just drag uh, this copy off to the side just so we have our, our reference or our main original design. And we are going to release this clipping mask and uh, we still actually have our circle. It's kind of hidden in there, and we'll just fill that in. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the letter M and draw a big box over top of everything. And uh, let's maybe layer it down a little bit uh, just so I can get to that circle. Now we're at our circle, and we're gonna grab the big box as well. And I'm gonna go to our Pathfinder I'm gonna hit minus front, and now I've punched a hole 
uh, in this big box that I've created. So all I have to do now is click on this texture and this is the compound path we can see up here and it is underneath this black kind of shape that we've now created. So I click on that, I click on that shape and uh, both are compound paths and I'm gonna hit minus front on the pathfinder and then Boom, we've punched out our design and it has the spherical edge just like this other one, but without the whole clipping mask issue. And I can click on this, I can change its color, no problem. And uh, yeah, I'm good to go. And that's sort of how you can uh, manage a clipping mask, kind of solve that clipping mask problem. And uh, ultimately, again, I recommend not using them if you're dealing with screen printing designing. Just take the proper steps to make your file that you're working with just a solid shape. Uh, and it's really not that challenging if you just think ahead. All right, so tip number four is know how many colors the screen printer you're using can print. Uh, this is something that I run into a lot of times where uh, a client reaches out to us and they have their design all put together and they send it over to us. I have to respond back to them saying, hey, our press that we use, uh, it, its maximum color is six colors. That's the most colors we can do in a design. Then I have to ask them, hey, is there any way that you can uh, lessen the amount of colors that you're using. Before you start designing, it's a good thing to know, all right, how many colors can my printer work with? And you won't have to deal with having to rework your design over and over and over again. And I just wanna show you guys a quick example of, of something that I had to do to kind of solve some issues with, with the design that someone sent over to us a while back. So let's hop back into Illustrator and I'll just show you that. This is a really cool design that a client sent over to us. And over here is the original design and uh, as you can see, looks awesome. A lot of colors going on, a lot of different things. Um, and honestly, if you count color for color all together, I think it's around 12 colors. And uh, like I said earlier, our shop can only print six colors. And so, you know, we have, you know, we have this tone right here, uh, and then this type of tan. We have like kind of two different tans. We have the skin tone up here, then we have the shadow of the skin tone. You know, we got a lot of stuff going on. Really, really cool, but it's about 12 colors. And and not a lot of shops uh, run 12 color presses. Over here, and I had to like work back and forth with the client uh, to dial this in, but this is what I ended up coming up with, and this is actually now just a six color print. Um, and how I actually did it, a lot of like that, these shadow colors, I ended up using half tones that uh, I put together in Photoshop and then had to bring over here. But, and, and even the hair had to get a little creative. I ended up using uh, this, uh, this color as more of like the underbase of the hair and then uh, doing a bunch of half toning going on in there, uh, kind of a different density of halftone to create that. And, and actually when it, when it did end up printing, it, it looked actually a lot closer to this brown tone. This is a great example of like, hey, they sent over a 12 color print and we were actually able to break it down into a six color. And if uh, you know the, the people designing this would have known that beforehand, I think that you know, we could have easily saved a, a lot of this process. And, and so that's just kind of my tip to you is when you're jumping into designing uh, screen printed artwork, just uh, shoot, a, shoot a call over or a text over to your screen printer you're gonna be working with. Yeah, just see, hey, how many colors uh, is the maximum that we can use in a design? And I'm, they're always happy to let you know and it'll just save, uh, save your butt and save your head. Tip number five, give screen printers high resolution artwork, preferably vectored images. This is something that if you're in screen printing, you've ran into this problem over and over again. They send you a file and it is pixelated and gross. It's not a vector file, it's probably a JPEG or a PNG or something like that. I can't work with this. I can't use this. Who designed this? Can you reach out to the original artist and maybe they have a vector file? If uh, there's not a vector file at all, it just blows my mind. I'm like, you're a large company. You don't have a vector file of your logo? This is your logo. I don't know, have vector files of your logos. Say there's nothing that can be done. Uh, I'm gonna kind of show you, you know, how to work with this stuff. We have this little leaf logo. And as you can see, 
Look at these jagged lines. It's also a, a PNG. It's a rasterized image that looks real bad. I got a couple different techniques you guys can use to go and fix this. Step one, you can just click on your, your uh, little PNG. You can go over here and lock that layer and hit P on your keyboard, grab the pen tool, and you can just straight use that pen tool and just kind of anchor point this whole thing out. And so as you can see, uh, you know, this, this works and it's an option. Something I do honestly a lot that's a, a bit quicker. I don't use it for every single design, but maybe they just send you something that can work well with this. And so if you have an iPad and an Apple Pencil and the program Procreate, I'm gonna show you a kind of quick and uh, simple technique to uh, maybe up the quality of a kind of pixelated bad graphic. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, go to this little plus sign up here. I'm gonna click on it and uh, let's just make a new canvas and uh, let's just say 5,000 by 5,000. Uh, DPI is 500, so we're working with a very large uh, file right here. It's got, it allows us 17 layers. So let's just create this and uh, we're gonna hit the little wrench up here. We're gonna say insert a photo and insert our little leaf graphic. As you can see, it's very, very small. And so we're gonna scale it up a bit. And uh, you know, this is our problem. We have all these jagged pixely lines and uh, we're just gonna kind of trace over this with a nice and sharp uh, black lines. We got our black selected. We're gonna make a new layer. Let's make, make a bunch of new layers, who cares? Uh, and uh, we're gonna choose this tapered black because uh, it's got a nice sharp uh, kind of edge to it. Very crisp and clean. And so I'm just gonna jump in and trace out uh, this design real quick. And there we go. We have our newly traced out design and you can see like, man, super pixelated, super rough. And we look at this and there's a lot cleaner and sharper edge that we're working with. So we're just gonna turn off that layer, um, go to our, our main one and say it's a pretty good size. We're just gonna go and we're gonna hit that little wrench. We're gonna go to share over here and we're just gonna save it as a JPEG. Uh, and we're gonna send that over to my computer with AirDrop. All right, so now we're uh, back over to the computer. We got Illustrator open. You know, this is our old leaf that we were messing with. But let's turn over a new leaf, and uh, this is our little uh, leaf we just traced out. And as you can see, you zoom in, and a lot sharper edges that we're working with versus, you know, this crazy pixelated, dirty version. We can go over here to Image Trace, and I have a little uh, preset that I've saved that's just called hand done. I just select it and the settings for that is my threshold is at uh, 97, my paths are at 97, my corners are at 97, my noise is at one, and I have ignore white selected. We got this, but we got this bounding box going on. And we're gonna go up here and hit expand. And there we go. We now have a vectored image. You know, we make it green if we want, just like the original. And you can just see, compare contrast, that's terrible. This one is way more usable. And, you know, if you're a nice guy, maybe you'll save this uh, and send it over to the client and say, here you go. Now you have a vector version of your logo and you don't have to mess around with this, uh, you know, dirty pixelated version anymore. One more, maybe a bonus phrase, tip, something. Maybe you're, uh, you know, maybe not a, a fluent designer and uh, you know the screen printer asked you, hey, can I get you know an Illustrator file of that design that you sent over? Don't uh, grab that same JPEG image that you sent to them before and then put it in an Illustrator document and hit save. That's not what they're asking for. We're asking for a vector. That's what this whole thing's about. We want vector, sharp, clean files. So just because a uh, JPEG is within a Illustrator file, that doesn't mean that it's a proper Illustrator file. So there you guys have it. Five tips. Expand your fonts, expand your strokes, maybe avoid using clipping masks. Know how many colors that your screen printer can print? Give us vector files. For work with high quality vector images. If you do those things, the screen printer you're working with is gonna be really happy. I'm gonna be really happy. 
uh, if you're sending me artwork and I just have this nice clean shape of a file, it's just like bam, all I gotta do, click on it, make it black, we're good to go. Everything is great. Maybe you're a designer jumping into uh, designing for screen printing. Do these, these tips and tricks. You're gonna be a better designer and people are gonna like you more. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Hopefully uh, you've subscribed to this channel because you want knowledge, you know, and knowledge we all know comes from subscriptions. Drop a like. We'll see you there. We'll see you in the air. Arf on you later, little doggies. Arf. <laughs> I feel like I've just not been, I've not done this in a while. I don't know if our viewers feel the same.